Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn it into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. But like any good scientist knows, the best way to find out is to try for yourself, which you can do for free, like right now. So let's get to it. Well, the Dalton family's tropical vacation isn't quite going according to plan. A few doses of anti-malarials, and instead of watching waves crash, they're seeing something else. This sketch is about entropy, with a little spontaneity and Gibbs free energy sprinkled in. We'd better get going, though. I'm getting distinct vibes of impending chaos in this dream. That didn't take long. This massive meteor symbolizes entropy. Entropy describes the spread of energy, which is why the meteor debris is spreading out all over the place. The more molecules spread out, the less organized they are and the greater their entropy. In an equation, entropy is always represented by the letter S. That's why our meteor has an S-shaped tail. The S should also remind you of the spread of energy. Speaking of spread, see that large arrow-like rock shard shooting up into the universe? As long as there's nothing preventing it from doing so, energy always trends toward being more spread out, which means the total entropy of the universe is always increasing. Entropy change in a system or reaction is a little different than entropy in the entire universe. It can increase if energy is taken in by the system, or decrease if energy is released into the surroundings. First, changing states of matter, like going from solid to liquid to gas, changes entropy. Gases, like this cloud high in the air, always have the highest entropy. In a gas, molecules move around fast and they're pretty spread out, which means high entropy. Condense that gas into a liquid, like this rain, and the molecules become a bit more orderly and less dispersed. Entropy decreases. And if that same matter assumes a solid state, like this sheet of ice, molecules are highly organized, don't move around much, and entropy is at its lowest. Entropy also changes based on how much of a substance you have. Take a look at this labor of moles, and yes, that's really what this group is called. These animal moles represent chemistry moles. Notice how they're spreading out in a chaotic frenzy? When there are more moles, or more of a substance, there's more total molecular movement and greater entropy. Quantity isn't the only thing that influences entropy, though. Heat also plays a role. Not quite what they usually mean by fire in the hole, but things are a little different here. Anyways, these moles are reacting to the fire by spreading out because adding heat to a system increases molecule energy and movement, which increases entropy. Finally, volume also plays a role. When the volume of a system increases, molecules can spread out more, so entropy increases. Notice how the disorderly entropic mole has a large volume of wine in that barrel, while his orderly sommelier counterpart has a low volume glass. Knowing that volume and entropy are directly related means we can also figure out how pressure influences entropy. According to Boyle's law, volume and pressure are inversely related. So when pressure decreases, entropy increases. Applying these concepts, one thing you might be asked is to determine the change in entropy, or delta S, of a reaction. You can remember delta S with this sorcerer in a delta-shaped hat and an S contrail behind his broom. Any time the products of a reaction have greater total entropy than the reactants, delta S is positive, just like this wizard's positive attitude. Even complex equations often boil down to comparing the states of matter on either side. That means you can skip some of the complicated math. More moles of gas products than gas reactants, for example, means that entropy increases and the reaction has a positive delta S. Once you know whether delta S for a reaction is positive or negative, you can predict whether or not that reaction proceeds spontaneously. Spontaneous reactions proceed on their own, like this rock spontaneously rolling down the mountain. In other words, the products form without adding any extra energy. Spontaneity isn't just determined by change in entropy, though. 
It also depends on enthalpy and temperature. Gibbs free energy combines enthalpy, entropy, and temperature into one term. The change in Gibbs free energy during a reaction, or delta G, describes the work done to a system to make the reaction happen. This giant with the really negative attitude represents a negative change in Gibbs free energy. This negative giant is at the base of the delta mountain and beneath that spontaneously rolling rock because a negative delta G means a reaction occurs spontaneously. On the other side of the delta mountain, we have this giant with a positive attitude. He represents a positive change in Gibbs free energy. A positive delta G means energy must be added for the reaction to occur, so it is not spontaneous. Notice how he's expending a lot of energy to get that rock up the mountain? It can't roll upwards on its own. Okay, one more possible scenario. A delta G of zero, which we've represented with this giant in the middle of the delta mountain with a zero-shaped stone. When delta G is zero, the reaction is in equilibrium, so there's no net change in the quantity of products or reactants and no change in entropy. Just like this snoozy dude isn't changing a whole lot. That being said, isn't there some saying about not disturbing sleeping giants? I think we should save any Gibbs calculations for another sketch. Sum up and wake the heck up from this dream. Entropy describes the spread of energy or molecular disorder. Entropy of the universe is always increasing, but the entropy of a system can change with changes to states of matter, the quantity of reactants, temperature, volume, or pressure. Entropy also influences whether a reaction proceeds spontaneously. Spontaneity can be determined by calculating a reaction's change in Gibbs free energy, delta G. If delta G is negative, the reaction is spontaneous. If positive, the reaction is not spontaneous, requiring energy input. And when delta G is zero, the reaction is in equilibrium. Okay, I'm pinching myself and nothing's happening. How do we actually wake up? Enjoy this lesson? Want to see more? Let us know by using the link in the description below.